Um, thinking of playing Iron Cross, man-to-man -man combat on the East Front, 1941-42. Right, next to move on the board for the, um, the Russians is the medium machine gun with the assistant platoon leader. Um, okay, the, just to clarify, very, very small writing, but the, the Russian medium machine gun has two tiny tiny numbers um, on the right uh, center there huh. uh, well there's something about the lighting or whatever here um, but basically the, the the movement allowance is on the machine gun um, counter in up uh, in up uh, state combat state so it is uh, one and two, three. One, two, three. Um, yes. All right. So um, I think that's right. All right. Um, at this point, the German medium machine gun here, um, it has initial range, very long. Yeah, that's pretty long range. 18. Um, sure I've got that right. The range is kind of small, too. Here, let's see if we can get the... German. Wow. We can barely see. Well, it's not very good, but anyways. So they are going to try to observe the Russians moving there. It's, um, the range is uh, 18, which is just inside the range we need. Um, uh, it's, uh, it is um, plus two, so we go plus two. I think I can remember this without even looking up. Plus two for the range, uh, which is bad because we want to get five or less because of the terrain, the multi hex uh, building here. So base observation is five, but plus two for each uh, group of five hexes beyond the initial five. So basically, six to ten is plus one, 11 to 15 is plus another. So we're at plus two, then we go, then we go minus two for moving units. So we go even, then we go minus one for something. Oh, minus one because, okay, so it's minus one because uh, there are four uh, soldiers mo moving in the hex. And again, that's the assistant platoon leader is one and the crew for the Soviet Machine gun is three, which is printed on the uh, printed on the counter. So there are four soldiers in that hex being observed or being attempted um, attempting to be observed. Um, so I do think it's minus one. I think I'm, let's see if I might have missed one. No, actually that is it. Oh wow, look at that! So they roll a nice four minus one is three, which is easily five or less. So they do observe. Now, at this point, I need to remember this, um, if I can remember this, and if it works how I think it's going to work, this will be really nice. So I'm going to take my ATS counter, and I'm using the, uh, whatever, the site picture there, a site graphic there for observation. So I'm going to mark it with the A, and let's see, would I mark it, well, I guess I will choose to, uh, what is it there? I'll choose, and I'll take an A, and I'll orient it the same way. A to A, I'll try that. So, they are now observed, so they will do opportunity fire, the, the German machine gun. So opportunity fire normally has a performance check, um, but I want to point out another rule. Rule. I knew there were several important rules that are buried in the text. Um, actually, so infantry and AFVs, armored fighting vehicles that, uh, attempting opportunity fire, have to do a PC with a modified plus one with a DRM plus one, but machine guns, ATRs, and ATGs do not have their PC die roll modified in this phase. Um, so, okay, so they do have to pass a performance check, but there is no DRM. Um, so the medium machine gun 
that's a tempting opportunity. Fire has a piece a PR performance rating of 10 there. Now you can see the three and the five on the right center. The three is the is the three is the crew size. So three soldiers man this machine gun, and five is the movement allowance of the machine gun. Okay, but they have a performance rating of 10, uh, no DRM. All right, but let's go in order here because it says other than a few differences, um, opportunity fire is performed like normal fire. So let's do designate target hex, obviously the multi-hex building here. Um, the machine gun is in direct, uh, was it direct uh, fire mode? All the machine guns are going to start in direct fire mode, but I'll go ahead and show uh, the German, German roster, the medium machine gun one right there, and I have marked off uh, direct fire, MO12. Okay. Um, um, we did observation, they successfully observed. Now we do PCs or taper units that will attempt to fire in the target hex at the target hex. Only those that pass will fire. Okay, so 10 or less. All right, so they roll an eight. They pass their performance check. So they are firing. Hmm, yeah. All right, determine the final firepower strength of the attack. Obviously we start with the 13. We start with the 13, that's the lower left. Um, they're not going to use intensive fire. We'll save that for later. That makes sense. Um, so, uh, range attenuation. Um, we're within the initial range of the machine gun, so there is no range attenuation. I can't think of any double, doubling, having, thirding, or quartering. Um, if, if we had chose to do machine gun intensive fire, we would double. Um, not doing that. Um, there is nothing in between. There's nothing in between. No terrain, no trees or AFEs or wrecks in the way. Um, there's no... Uh, yeah. Um, we're not higher. Uh, I'm sorry, the target hex is not higher than the firing unit. They're on the same level. Um, they're fully crewed, um, so, um, so I think that it's, uh, just 13. Okay, so 13 firepower is the, um, the, the pinned value. That have rounded up is 7, which is the suppressed level. And lay it out again. Um, pinned, suppressed, um, and then that have rounded up is the uh, eliminated number. Okay, 3.5 or 4. Okay, and then we determine the number of dice rolled. It is 4. It is 4 dice for a multi hex building. Um, and there are, there are no dice, I don't see any dice modifier, um, modifications to the number of dice. So we're rolling four against each unit. Isn't that interesting? I just noticed, I'm not gonna, you know, it's not, it's not worth it because of how much I'm enjoying this, but I just realized you're gonna roll once for each unit in the target hex that is subject to AP fire. Well, the, uh, The the machine gun is a full crew of three. You know what? I'm going to check to make sure, but I'm going to roll for the assistant platoon leader first. Okay, so... Um, <laughs> 14. I actually just missed being pinned. So, the, the APL is okay. Let's see what happens to the machine gun crew. Okay, actually, it is, it's dealt with. I just hadn't gotten there yet. It's dealt with in the... Uh, Combat AP fire combat results uh, text. Okay, so so first we're going to roll for the unit. Um, oh, we get something. Eleven. Okay. Oh well. All right. So it's just pinned. Um, 
So, as a matter of fact, infantry and crude weapons pinned. Place the unit in a down posture. So I'm flipping the machine gun over um, and place a P counter on it. So the machine gun is pinned, but the APL is okay. Okay. Since I talked about it, um, since I talked about it, let me uh, say that if uh, if the unit result had been eliminated, I would have rolled two dice per crew member. Um, and if the, it's eight or less, that a crew member was killed. So I actually would have rolled for each individual crew member. And let's say one was killed, I would mark them off. Um, I'd mark them off here. Mark crew members off there. Okay, so it is handled. Um, not bad. Not bad. Um, to finish this out, um, the, uh, the machine gun. Okay, so the machine gun is marked fired. Um, we have our our observation marker. Observation marker. I'm still wondering. Maybe they should be the same. I don't know. I'm I'm experimenting, right? So I'm gonna switch that out. We'll we'll say that we'll say we'll use the same. So um, German and German. Does that make sense? Huh. Like I said, I guess I'll experiment. Okay, I'm gonna put it in the front there. Um, so actually, the APL is gonna go to down posture now too, and then they're done. Um, and they're marked as having moved. Um, okay, 